everyone. Today is Friday, December 17th, 2021. My name is Evan. Welcome back to our weekly stock market analysis videos. If it's your first time tuning in, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Here's how we break up our analysis. We break things up into two parts. In part one, we look at everything that went on this week in markets. We go beyond price action. We look at things like market internal, sector performance, correlations, credit markets, interest rates, all the good stuff, and pick apart everything that stands out, looks different, interesting, or notable. And then in part two, we jump into the charts. We look at those longer term trends. We break down price action and try and best position ourselves looking ahead. So hopefully you're in the right place. Let's dive into some of the headlines from this week. And as a, well, not as a reminder, because I'm sure many noticed uh, we did not get a, a midweek video out this week. I was traveling, tried to get that squeezed in, but just couldn't quite get the timing to work out. So um, no, there was no trade ideas, no update midweek, but uh, I think we'll be back into normal schedule next week. So let's take a look at some of these headlines here. Big takeaway is no all time high follow through buying. So remember last week, we had this big furious snapback rally across market indices we saw the s p the q's the russell all up to three percent last week got new closing year-to-date all-time highs for the s p 500 and this week we ended up giving some of that back and i am sort of pleased with the title of last week's episode where we sort of talked about this scenario that the title of last week's market analysis video was after the snapback rally is now the right time to panic. And the idea behind that title, and we sort of talked about it at various points throughout the video, was that now that we got the snapback, now that we you know worked off all those extreme oversold conditions, is this the time where we wanna reposition ourselves, where we wanna take notice of the breath slowdown that we have been tracking and the growth stock sell off and some of the intense selling under the hood. Is it now time to sort of notice that and position ourselves or get ready for, you know, a potential volatile event or rest of the year or another sell off. And we sort of saw that this week. We saw the volatility continue. We saw indices start to roll over. So we're going to talk more about that. But hopefully we were at least open minded or prepared for that scenario if you tuned into last week's video. Now, our second point here is index to growth stock reversal. What I mean by that is the market cap weighted indices have been just trucking higher again, all time highs last week, all time highs, I think Monday of this week or early in this week. And we saw the growth stock, those high growth, high multiple names really just getting liquidated over the past four to six weeks. And we saw that reverse this week. So we saw the growth stocks really put in um, a notable reversal here into the end of the week while we saw the indices sell off. So it seems like maybe we've got a little bit too stretched there. That relationship might be, you know, kind of going the other way. Last but not least, we got the US dollar, which looks primed, looks strong to make another push higher. So let's jump into the numbers here. If we take a look at the right hand column here, this is the one week change. And you can see all indices were in the negative this week. NASDAQ was the big loser, 3.25%. All indices now are notably red here over the past one month now. So everything has uh, basically um, you know, treaded water or, or sold off. Basically everything is now sold off. So, um, so that's kind of the look here into the end of the year, big Santa Claus rally. That's the question everybody's asking. I mean, maybe, um, <laughs> that's not a helpful answer, but the, the, the answer I always like to give people who ask, you know, are we going to get a Santa Claus rally is okay, maybe, but from what level, you know, what level is the interesting point at which we rally? Because here's the thing, if we sell off, you know, 10, 12, 13% going into the last week of the year, and then we get a bounce for the last four or five days, I guess that's a Santa Claus rally, but you know, the, the prior, you know, happening there was that we fell 15%. So does that count as a Santa Claus rally? I don't know. Um, but here we are kind of, again, selling off and seeing some volatility into the last week of the year. If we pop up for a couple of days, you know, 
then I guess we get that Santa Claus rally, but at what cost? So that's a long-winded way of saying, you know, kind of still seeing a, a little bit of unwind here into the end of the year. It's also quadruple witching. That was the um, other remark here I was going to squeeze in, uh, quadruple witching. So we basically had lots of option change, lots of sets and expir uh, expirations um, expiring on this Friday, and that obviously can cause some interesting market dynamics with... Um, stocks uh, kind of uh, expiring the majority of options. So let's kick into market internals here. So if we take a look at market internals, you can see this is not going well. This does not look great. Um, this in fact is now just going straight up into the bearish territory, uh, especially if I'm looking at this first row here. So this is uh, NYSE 52 week highs minus lows. So every single day, sum those up, take a look at the difference or the, um, the, the net difference between the two. And you can see now we are getting into some stronger negative territory. This was the Thursday snapback after the, the, the Fed uh, announcement. So even though we had, again, a 2% a rally or 1.5% rally in the indices, notice under the hood here, it wasn't all that exciting. And then we kind of rolled back over again on Friday. So this number is concerning. Second row here, AD line is concerning. And if we take a look at this chart here, things look concerning. So I am not happy about the outlook here. This puts my sort of disposition again more into the bearish scenario. This is a firmly sort of bearish stance here that I have as an outlook on this market. That does not mean we have to go down in a straight line. That does not mean, you know, it's sell everything. There's definitely going to be opportunity when you get into higher volatility environments. You're already seeing that with again, growth stocks is just the easy example the snapback, the rotation, you get defensives, you get energy, you've got real estate, which is doing decent. So there's lots of opportunity here, but this turns into a stock picker's market. And again, this is a glass half empty market environment the way I look at this now. So if we take a look at sector performance here, you can see it was a pretty mixed bag, most things negative, but on the upside, we did have healthcare, we did have real estate, we had consumer staples and utilities. Those were in the green here. Again, you're already seeing some uh, kind of stock picker's opportunity or if you're in certain sectors, you're definitely going to be behaving um, better or worse than what the indices are doing. On the downside, energy was the last spot, consumer discretionary in the second last spot, and technology down 4%, third to worst performer this week. If we take a look at correlations here, I mean, the big standout, first thing is, you know, all the indices are trading pretty highly correlated to one another. So again, you're just seeing broad lockstep movement in, in equities across the Dow, across the SPY, across the NASDAQ, across small caps. So that is notable. We also see the big correlation between oil, which has been holding up here. So oil is, is definitely sort of a, a risk factor here, or just trading along risk assets. We see the 10-year yield also very strongly correlated to what stocks are doing right now. And of course, this is all of the talk right now in the narrative in what the Fed is going to be doing, tightening, and how many, you know, um, rate, uh, you know, rate decisions are going to be made next year. All of that being kind of, uh, you know, discovered by the market right now. And you can see just that tight correlation here between stocks and what the 10 year yield is doing. So notably there. And again, as a reminder, these correlations are based on 10 days only the last 10 days of data. So they are inherently noisy, but it does give us an idea of what's trading together, what's moving together and what those market narratives might be. If we take a look at volatility here it did pop up this week, actually not a tremendous amount. Again, we did have quadruple witching and we did have a lot of those options sort of expiring. So we've got a VIX though north of 20. So I don't like to do TA necessarily on the VIX itself, but we are seeing, you know, the VIX kind of holding above the 20s. I always like, again, in the bullish environments to see a teen, to, to see the VIX back in the teens, ideally under 18. But, you know, if we get back into the teens, we can hold in that level. That gives me more confidence about the broader market when we're staying above 20 here, 21 spot 57. Uh, that again, just gives me more um, you know, uh, a concern about this market when you tie it that back into market internals and some of the other action under the hood. You can see volatility term structure though, pretty straightforward here, and um, you know, nothing too. Uh, nothing too uh, erratic right there when we look out into the future. If we take a look at interest rates and credit, you can see yields were up across the board. So interest rates rising. You can see the uh, bond funds here falling a little bit on the week as well. So um, we're going to keep an eye on that. We've we've 
you know, kind of um, seen the bond market trying to catch its footing, gave back a little bit, but uh, we'll see how, um, you know, the rest of this year kind of shakes out. If we take a look at dollar and commodities, dollar index pretty strong here as it closes um, towards, I think it was 52 week highs. We'll take a look at the charts in just a little bit, uh, but really close to the uh, upper end of this week's range. We saw gold continue to rise here, silver continue to rise, Bitcoin got hit uh, this week 7% to the downside and all of the uh, kind of ag crude oil commodity complex is, is sort of under pressure here and uh, looks like it wants to kind of stay under pressure so we're seeing a little bit of change of uh, character here in commodities I would say as well going into the end of the year. So if we put it all together, there's not a whole lot to like this week. We saw credit market performance kind of hanging in there but otherwise Really, uh, everything else kind of uh, X's across the board. We give it a solid D here in terms of this week's report card. If we take a look at our trading systems here. All right, so we got the top system is Merlin. This is our longer term system. This looks out. Uh, over the next, you know, four, five, six weeks or so. And this is a slower moving system. So it's not going to ever, you're not going to see that go from 80% down to 0% unless we see a real market shock. But uh, you're seeing con this continue unwind here. So this has just been dropping from what was basically 100% invested portfolio almost all year long. I mean, it was always dancing between 80 and, and 100%. And you can see it continues to raise cash here and it's not putting it to work. There are some opportunities it's seeing. Again, it is going to pick it spots there are opportunities within sectors and individual stocks but for now you can see that cash position continues to rise Lamerick here remember this was net short last week and so coming into this week what it did was start to cover those shorts and then into really um, the last two days here started to pick positions back up so it's got 11 positions on which is almost its full boat of what it will hold and you can see it's still just net 22% invested so that means it's holding longs and shorts right now this is the environment where Lamerick starts to like volatility and starts to pick the kind of short-term opportunity uh, between uh, all of this movement. So right now, that is our positioning. Again, uh, these trading systems are complete turnkey sort of portfolios. We generate trade reports and everything can be sort of traded, conducted, and, um, you know, executed end of day only, you know, without staring at markets all day. So if you're interested in this, if you want to get our signals and insights every single night, check out the link appearing in the top right of your screen. Now with that, we're back here in just a second with some part two. All right, we are back here. We've got TC2000 open. We've got our equity market grid showing. We have our smart trend filter applied to all of these charts. That's the multicolored dots you see, the green and yellow and occasional red dot in here. It, it measures price and volume across time. It helps us determine trend, trend strength, path of least resistance. If you're a TC2000 user, you can download that. If you're a TradingView user, you can download that on our website. It is a premium indicator. It does cost money for that one. Uh, we do have free indicators as well but that one is a paid one. All right, so this is a weekly time frame we are looking at here of the major indices. And what you'll notice is, despite the selling, despite the pressure this week, we still have no trend uh, sell signals here on the long-term time frame. In fact, if we look at the S&P 500, this week produced a buy signal for the S&P 500 on a weekly basis. So this was neutral chop for the past two weeks and it produced a buy signal this week. And what that's telling us here is that we still don't have enough weakness based on really price, price and volume, but those combination here just really hasn't been able to, to, to break down from this long-term trajectory. This makes sense. And this is a little counterintuitive to what we just talked about in part one, because we labeled a lot of sort of pessimistic things that are happening underneath the market hood. And the way I really like to think about that is market internals and some of those other negatives about the market that we just finished talking about, those can often sort of precede what is going to happen potentially, right? Everything's probability based, so I don't want to be absolute. But my belief here is that if market internals continue to stay uh, you know, weak and we see the VIX stay elevated and we see those the wrong sectors outperforming, all the things we just talked about. If that continues, I would expect to see the S&P 500 start selling off more aggressively here. I would expect to see a trend break and then eventually a sell signal produced. That is the bear case scenario. It hasn't happened yet. There's a chance it doesn't happen, but that's sort of the, the mental map that I would use based on everything we just talked about. So, 
We'll have to see if that happens. If we look at the NASDAQ 100, you can see this is definitely a weaker uh, market here. It's a weaker group of stocks. The NASDAQ 100 is still uh, still showing a yellow kind of choppy neutral cross mix signals right now. And if we look at the Russell 2000, uh, it's remarkable, but this is still holding on here to a yellow signal as well. This will be the first one to go down and produce a sell signal. It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened all year. It hasn't happened in the past two years. The last time we saw a sell signal here was right at the start of COVID or when we were first learning about COVID and it was spreading everywhere. That was back in March of 2020. That was the last time we saw a sell signal on the Russell 2000 weekly timeframes. So these are bigger signals when they happen. It hasn't happened yet. We're going to keep an eye on that uh, next week. Same thing with Acquiex. I would expect this one happens soon or first as well uh, compared to the four of these. Hasn't happened just yet. Now, if we go down to a daily chart, so we go a little bit tighter on the action here. The Russell 2000 has been in a sell signal since November 24th. So if you were just looking on the uh, daily chart here and you were following the simple trend model here, you'd effectively be short or out of the Russell back starting in, uh, you know, right before uh, U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. And so that has not changed. We're seeing volatility, of course, but we're still in a sell signal there. S&P 500 neutral looks like that could turn down. NASDAQ neutral looks like this could turn down. Last signal was a sell signal for the for the NASDAQ. So again, you can see more pessimism here in the NASDAQ. And it's basically the Russell the weakest, NASDAQ second weakest, S&P holding up best relative to the others. Acquiex pretty weak as well. So let's, let's take a look at some price action here. Let's take a look at what's going on with some levels. And we can see here that the S&P 500 is still in the same roadmap. I feel like we've been looking at this, these same levels for really the past two months. And it's because we have, uh, we haven't really gone anywhere over the past, you know, month and a half or so. We topped out way back here at the start of November around 4,700. And really the market's just been kind of banging its head against 4,700. Every time it gets above there, it ends up, you know, failing, rejecting, and, you know, selling off for a few percent. So when we look here again at this week's action, we're just looking at right here was Monday's session. So we essentially started the week off with some selling pressure, stabilized a bit Tuesday. Wednesday was Fed day, had this nice rally up. We briefly made, you know, kind of new highs here on Thursday. Looked like we could get going, sold off, and then saw a follow through sell off day. So, when we really want to keep things simple, we're still looking at, you know, let's call it 4720, right? 4715. Anything over 4700, I mean, that's, that's still resistance here. And we can really kind of simplify that by this indicator here, which really has its entire job of just, you know, kind of mapping the obvious sort of resistance and support areas. And so when we look at this indicator, you can clearly see all of the levels that are stacking up here around 4,700. The more dots you see at a certain level, the stronger that resistance is or the more apparent it has been. And so that's the clear level you want to see the market break out above. In fact, I don't, mind seeing a strategy here where you're flat the s p 500 given everything that looks kind of negative under the hood to me um you know and, until and if this can start breaking out over 4700 and given the action underneath the market hood not interested in kind of holding the s p 500 here it is holding up well on a relative basis but I still, uh, the way I would look at this market, wouldn't trust it until it can start, you know, uh, breaking out and, and you know, uh, undoing some of that weakness. On the downside, you know, we got this big level right down here. It's 4510. And if we look right over here, 4537, that was the old resistance highs of September. So you got the, the highs here around 40, uh, 4540. You got this support here around 4514. That is the area to hold. Let's go right back to the uh, candlestick chart. So that's coming in right in here. So real kind of clear levels here. I don't think there's anything too, um, you know, uh, there, there, you don't have to be 
too creative here. I think the S&P 500 is just in this choppy range. And, um, you know, a move back down to 4,500 wouldn't surprise me. That's where I'd want to see the buyers, you know, show back up. We'll see what the market looks like there. We'll see what market internals look like there. If we can get a sell off to 4,500, we can see some positive divergence in internals. The VIX start to sell off then maybe we're fine, right? And maybe the sell-off can be contained at just a you know five six percent pullback from highs. But I want to see what that looks like. If we you know come back down to forty five hundred, market internals look even worse. The VIX is jumping even higher. Credit markets look lousy. Then uh, we might have something bigger on our hands to come back down to the forty three hundred area. Again, these are all just possible scenarios, not predicting a big decline here. But I do look at this market as a glass half empty sort of market here. So I am more pessimistic than I ever have been in the past, you know, uh, year, let's call it. So that's really uh, kind of the, the, the high level on the S&P 500. I don't think it needs to be much more complicated than those big levels there, 4720 and 4500, let's call it. If we go to the Russell 2000, it's hanging in here. It's trying to hang in here. And for good reason, because again, if we just go to our very simple indicator on support and resistance, clean this up, go to a daily chart, and we take a look at this, look at all of this support, all of the dip buyers that have come in here over the past 14, 12 months, 10 months, 11 months, and have supported this market around 212. And it continues to be that way. We're seeing heavy volume come in. We talked about you know um, bouncing here at the lows. Last week, we got that nice, you know, bounce off of the lows right up here. And again, that was, this was the spot kind of coming in saying, okay, we got the bounce is now's the time to panic is now the time where we should be, you know, cautious. And, you know, sure enough, we kind of rolled back over to the lows here. Nothing is given way. We're still holding support. There's still good volume coming in here. So Russell 2000, it's at a decision point. Um, you know, if you want to take a shot here on the Russell, even though it's the lowest, um, you know, the weakest on a trend basis, you, your, your, your stop is well defined in my eyes here. So, you know, if it loses, you know, if you're long on Friday going into the weekend and your stop is the low of the day or something defined like that, and you're looking for a move back up into the two twenties and you can scale, you know, scale and, and do all that fun stuff, then there's, there's, you know, potential opportunity there in the very, very short term. But um, again, longer term, still the weakest of the majors. You can see a little bit of positive divergence starting to come in here on, in terms of momentum if you look at MACD at the top of the chart. But that's really the lay of the land here on the Russell. It's still um, you know, a, a, a trader's market in my eyes. And I think I just want to be a little bit cautious here. If you look at the, say, monthly chart, you can see gone absolutely nowhere. Very, very, very tight ranges here. Volume stacking up into the end of the year. So um, we're at a bit of an inflection point and, you know, we'll see how this uh, finishes out the year. Last but not least, the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 here. Again, similar to the S&P 500, although a little bit weaker, right? So everything like we talked about there still kind of applies. If we look at the cues here on the daily chart, you can see the resistance stacking up more so around 400. You get the all-time highs up here around 405. You got this resistance up here around 400 and you're back into support here. So again, just very choppy in here. And you've got the old breakout highs here in September around 382. So it's right at kind of an important area where we just want to see it hang in here. And it looks a little bit dicey, looks a little messy here, not seeing the same positive momentum divergence. You're seeing, you know, heavy volume come in, big ranges opening up. So again, I'm kind of cautious on the cues here. Uh, just generally speaking, it looks like they may want to come in. If you look at some of these big markets, uh, I'm sorry, big individual stocks that are holding it up. I mean, look at Apple here. This was one of the highest volume days we've seen all year. And again, if you throw on like Bollinger Bands on Apple, look at this weekly Bollinger. So Apple does not like to be above the weekly Bollinger Band all that often. You can see that, in fact, most of the times it really kind of, you know, reverses from outside of there. It, it, it you know, starts a, a four, five, six week sell off. And, you know, if, if that were to occur here and you see Apple come in back down into the even the 140s or so, even just, you know, a 15 percent correction from highs, that's obviously going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on the queues. Again, I don't want to play the prediction game, just looking at where we are on some of these markets. And, you know, you have to be a little bit cautious or understand, you know, what what, what some of those components are. And, uh, you know, those are some of the things I'm looking at. So for the queues, again, glass half empty there. And that's 
really, I think, a good roundup on all of the major averages. Let's take a look at VIX. We talk about VIX here. I like to see VIX under 20 back into the teens, and it just couldn't stay there this weekend. So it, it chopped around right in here. I would have loved to see the VIX, you know, just entirely collapse down back into the 18s, go into Friday around, you know, 18 or so. That'd be a much better situation. We're seeing it hold up around 21, above 20. Gives me a little bit of, again, concern. If I take a look at the US dollar, we talked about that. Look how strong the dollar looks here. And again, this 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 can start to put pressure on lots of things as well. Lots of trickle down effects on uh, what the dollar is doing. And uh, of course here, the dollar now going into the weekend pretty strong. It's been chopping around three weeks, going sideways, high tight kind of consolidation. And we get a new all time, not all time, uh, new year to date weekly closing high here. So it looks like the dollar could run MACD is leading and that could put some pressure on lots of different um, assets there. If we take a look at 10 year yields. So if we take a look at the uh, 10 year treasury yield, Looks like, you know, it's uh, it, it wanted to, you know, just roll from here. It is trying to hang in here. It looks pretty messy. Um, but generally speaking here, it, it's got this more pessimistic sort of uh, fall to it on, on yields. So I know everybody's looking for yields to sort of rise and, and you know, um, this tightening process to, to start. But uh, I don't know the, the, you know, looking at the actual um, TNX here looks kind of the opposite looks like it may have you know kind of topped off and wants to roll over we'll see again not super high conviction there but looks like it's in a messy spot and gold i talked about this for the first time in a very long time last week and saying how i'm starting to you know get a little more interested in gold and still is the case uh, i don't know that it's ready just yet but um, I, I am, you know, keeping an eye on it. High volume came in this week. Again, a lot of the high volume will be because of quadruple witching, but um, heavy volume coming in, trying to make a stance here. You know, if the dollar starts to really run, then that's probably going to continue to put pressure on gold. So I don't know that the timing's right just yet, but again, it is back on kind of my, my watch list. So that I think covers all the majors here. Let's take a look at some of the sectors of interest here you'll notice most things are bearish so we've got a couple of simple scans we built out to look for kind of high volume breakouts and some other notable moves you can see on the upside here you can see drug manufacturers uh really moving this week high volume breaking out to new highs we see utilities breaking out to new highs and we see consumer defensive beverages breaking out to new highs again in the most bullish markets, this is not exactly the group you want to see up here. So you'd rather see energy, industrials, technology, things like that. If we go to the bearish list, you will find those things. So here we go with uh, auto and truck dealerships breaking down on heavier volume, auto parts breaking down light volume, but eh, and I don't want to say breaking down, but just continuing to sell off. See banks, you know, continuing to slide lower here, business equipment, industrials, you know, back to support. This would be an interesting spot for it. Home furnishing and fixtures, breaking down heavier volume, lodging, selling off, oil and gas, selling off, pollution and treatment, industrials, starting to break down here, railroads, still at highs, but, you know, reversing a bit, tools and accessories, also down here, waste management, consumer discretionary XLY, just generally, got energy XLE, just generally XLE, the sector XLK, notable heavy volume kind of rejection off those highs, and then uh, back to the top of the list. So those are some of the movers. That's the wrap up for this week. Lots to think about, lots to talk about, but there's definitely some cross currents under here. So leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are this week. Are you doing any changes going into the new year? It's your uh, kind of last time to lock in maybe some some losses. If you if you accrued any losses here in the fourth quarter, and it's been easy to on the long side, unfortunately. But if you have any losses there and you want to start offsetting those for Uncle Sam tax purposes, you've got that. Uh, and, you know, that might explain a lot of the selling as well um, on, in some of these areas, especially the growth stock spiral down to the downside. You know, that um, tax loss is a real harvesting is a real thing going into the end of the year. So, um, you know, you got that. And uh, obviously, so I'm just repositioning into 2022. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you're looking at. Thanks as always for tuning in and watching. Every Friday, we do these long form market analysis videos. If you like them, subscribe on our YouTube channel or follow us at thetraderist.com. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next week.